Have you ever found yourself stuck in dua to where you know what you want to ask Allah for, but you can't come up with the right words to ask Him for it? And then you go asking or looking for some sort of prophetic dua that you hope matches perfectly with the specific ask that you have. What if I told you that there's one catch-all dua that takes everything you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for and puts it perfectly in a few sentences to achieve that goal? I want you to picture the scene because it's actually going to be a familiar scene throughout this entire series. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that I was in my room in salah exerting myself in dua. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walks in on me while I'm in dua and he asked me for something alayhi salatu was salam and I was slow to respond to him. So think of her pushing herself in dua, trying to come up with the perfect words to achieve what she wants to gain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intervenes and he says, Ya Aisha, alayki bi jumalat du'a'i wa jawami'ihi. O oh, Aisha, stick to the du'as that are comprehensive and all-encompassing. And this is something, subhanAllah, you're going to find with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Aisha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with Juwayriya, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Umm Habiba, where he comes in alayhi salatu wasalam and he says, listen, I can give you something that you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that will achieve everything that you're trying to get out of this dua. And here in this intimate conversation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is going to give Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha what some of the scholars call the most comprehensive dua from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa In fact, the great Mullah Ali al-Qari rahimahullah said, this is the most comprehensive dua from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, O oh Aisha, say the following words. Allahumma inni as'aluka min al-khayri kullihi, aajilihi wa aajilihi, ma alimtu minhu wa ma lam a'lam, wa a'udhu bika min al-sharri kullihi, aajilihi wa aajilihi, ma alimtu minhu wa ma lam a'lam. O oh Allah, I ask you from all that is good in this world and in the hereafter what I know and what I do not know. And O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from all evil, in this world and in the hereafter, what I know and what I do not know. And then she goes on to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka, abduka wa nabiyuka, wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma a'adha bihi abduka wa nabiyuka. And O oh Allah, I ask you for all of the good that your slave and your prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ever asked you for, and I seek refuge with you from all of the evil that your slave and your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ever sought refuge from. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannata wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. Wa a'udhu bika min al-nari wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin aw amal. O oh Allah, I ask you for jannah, for paradise, and for that which brings me closer to it in word and in deed. And I seek refuge in you from hellfire, and that which brings me closer to it in word and in deed. And then finally, وَأَسْأَلُكَ أَن تَجْعَلَ كُلَّ قَضَاءٍ قَضَيْتَهُ لِي خَيْرًا And I ask you to make every decree that you decree concerning me good. So in this dua, subhanAllah, you have pretty much all of the articles of faith summarized in one paragraph. And I want to break it down, inshaAllah ta'ala, into four parts. The first part, is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. The second part is everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for. The third part is everything that leads to the destination that I want in the hereafter. And then the fourth part is everything that is beneficial of decree for me in this world. So let's break it down inshaAllah ta'ala. In the first part, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every good that you know and that he knows. Now that means everything that you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, whether it's your finances or your relationships or your careers or your pursuits, anything that you want to ask Allah for that you know is good for you, you're including it in this dua. And then you're deferring to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, oh Allah, and every good that you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's better for us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows good things for us that we have no idea even exist in the realm of good and evil. So, O oh Allah, based upon everything that you know, 
Give me everything that's good for me in this life and in the hereafter. And also protect me from the evil that I know I want to be protected from. So if you're making dua for Allah to protect you from someone who's trying to harm you or for some sort of oppression, everything that I know to be evil and the harm that I don't even know exists out there in this life and in the next. So you're not even time bound, subhanAllah, in this dua. And it's based upon everything that Allah knows. And you're achieving this in one sentence. Then in the second thing, and it's the Prophet ﷺ telling Aisha radiallahu anha to make this dua. And I ask you for all of the good that the Prophet ﷺ ever asked you for. And I seek refuge with you from all of the things that the Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge from. Now, subhanAllah, if you think of the Prophet ﷺ's duas, like if I was to take a book of the authentic supplications of the Prophet ﷺ and say, here, say the sentence and you achieve all of these duas in one sentence. On top of that, Imagine the du'as of the Prophet ﷺ on the night of Ta'if, the night before Badr, some of his most difficult moments, the Qiyam of the Prophet ﷺ. So in this one sentence, you are getting all of those du'as that the Prophet ﷺ made in your own du'a. And it's the Prophet ﷺ telling Aisha radiallahu anha, here is a catch-all. Here is a way for you to achieve all of that which I ask my Lord with. And subhanAllah, no one knows Allah better than the Prophet ﷺ. And no one had more beautiful and more comprehensive du'as than the Prophet ﷺ. So it starts with everything Allah knows, then it goes to everything the Prophet ﷺ asked for, and then finally, what is the good that you know that you really, really want? It's Jannah. And this entire existence that we have here on this earth is to get back to Jannah. And it's the ultimate reward. And we have the guidebook, but sometimes we stray away from it either because we don't know any better or because we do other than what we know to be better. So, oh Allah, I ask you for Jannah. But I don't just ask you for Jannah. I ask you to make every word and every deed that I say a means by which I get closer to my goal of Jannah. And I seek refuge in you from the fire and every word or deed that could take me to the fire. And this is a profound realization that the Prophet wasallam gives to us where the Prophet ﷺ says that a person says one word and they don't even think about that word. And through that word, they please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah raises them by ranks into paradise. But on the other hand, a person says one word recklessly, not thinking about it. And by that word, they displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they plunge themselves into the depths of the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Allahumma ameen. So we're recognizing here that it's small deeds and small words that we sometimes don't appreciate the consequences of. And so, O oh Allah, I ask you for the destination, and I ask you for the deeds that will take me to the desired destination in the hereafter. And then the last part of this dua is the one that fits destiny, the one that fits decree. وَأَسْأَلُكَ أَن تَجْعَلَ كُلَّ قَضَاءٍ قَضَيْتَهُ لِي خَيْرًا And I ask you that every decree that you have for me here is good. Now, here's the thing. Notice, Though it is an explicit du'a for good decree, it's not necessarily a du'a for easy decree. And sometimes we conflate the two. The Prophet ﷺ said, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ mu'min," That how amazing is the affair of the believer. Why? In أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ Because every affair of the believer is khair, is good. What does that mean? If something pleases him, something happens to him that he's grateful for, then he says, Alhamdulillah, and it's better for him. And if a hardship is visited upon him, he patiently endures that hardship and it's khair, it's better for him. And this is only for the believer that every decree for the believer is khair, is good, because it becomes a means by which it brings him closer to Allah, closer to manifesting the qualities of the Prophet Sallallahu closer to achieving the destination that he or she seeks in the hereafter, which is Jannah. Also, we find from this, dear brothers and sisters, that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for you ease, but if that ease takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that prosperity makes you ungrateful, or you use that prosperity to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that decree is actually not khayr for you. It's actually not good for you. Likewise, sometimes a hardship comes to you, and instead of making you more patient, instead of it bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it actually makes you bitter and jaded. So it's not khair for you. It's not good for you. So you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the goodness of divine decree. And this is subhanAllah why the scholars say this prayer is so comprehensive. 
Now, did the Prophet also used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from the things that we know we don't want to see in this life, that we know are difficulties, that we know are the evil of decree? And the answer is absolutely. And there's a profound dua where the Prophet also used to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from four things. Min jahdil bala wa darak shaqa wa su'il qada wa shamatat al a'da. He used to seek refuge alayhi salatu salam from the severity of trials and then from drowning in misery. And darak al shaqa, the scholars say, is when the trial becomes so severe that it could kill you. SubhanAllah, it's like the end of it all where you're drowning in misery, where you can't think outside of that trial anymore. Min su'il qada. And from the hardship of decree, from the evil of decree. May Allah protect us from the evil of decree in this life or the next. And then finally, shamatat al-a'da, when the enemies gloat over your misfortune. And so the Prophet ﷺ taught us how to ask Allah for all good decree, how to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the things that we know to be hardship. But what is the greatest station that you could achieve out of all of that? Sometimes for reasons that are unknown to us, bad decree, and I'm using quotation marks for a very specific reason here, bad decree afflicts us. We make all these du'as and then all of these things still come to us and we wonder, wait a minute, how come these difficulties are still coming to us? Because if we take those difficulties in the right manner, then those become means by which we are elevated in the hereafter, so long as our response is one that is befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah Azza wa has decreed for us. And so finally, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make this beautiful dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka rida ba'd al-qada. Oh Allah, after it's all said and done, I ask you for contentment. I ask you to have the station of rida, the station of being pleased with you after the qada, after the decree. So whatever it turned out to be for me, Oh Allah, let my response, you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide your response. Let my response to it all be rida, be being pleased with you. And Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, being pleased with Allah and his decree is the paradise of this earth. It is the jannah of this earth. It is the greatest of the doors to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the bliss of the worshipers and it is the joy of those who long to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so while you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the destination of Jannah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you the ability to be pleased with his decree in this life, then you've already achieved the destination of Jannah in this world, in your heart. Allahumma inni as'aluka min al-khayri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimtu minhu wa ma lam a'alam wa a'udhu bika min al-sharri kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimtu minhu wa ma lam a'alam اللهم إني أسألك من خير ما سألك عبدك ونبيك وأعوذ بك من شر ما عاذ به عبدك ونبيك اللهم إني أسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل وأعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل وأسألك أن تجعل كل قضاء قضيته لي خيرا اللهم إني أعوذ بك من جهد البلاء ودرك الشقاء وسوء القضاء وشماتة الأعداء اللهم إني أسألك الرضا بعد القضاء 